All right, they call it Street Smart for a reason. He's in studio with us right now. Mark Grant, Managing Director at Southwest Securities and the author of the Out of the Box newsletter. It's read in 50 countries by over 5,000 institutions. Mark, great to have you on. Great to be here with you. All right, uh, let's talk about what just happened. Moody's downgrading 12 banks. You spotted that one coming over on the tape. Any surprise? Yeah, it's a surprise because they're basically the banks that are owned or quasi owned by Germany. So if you're downgrading the German public banks, what does that say about the sovereign credit, and when is it coming? And Germany is the benchmark that is, in theory, what everyone looks at. That's right. So if they downgrade uh, Germany, if Germany loses its AAA status, you have a whole other question about what's going to happen in Europe. Well, as a matter of fact, we got a chart of spreads of, of all the different countries that trade versus Germany, Germany being that benchmark, and you look at some of the spreads, and, of course, they've blown out. You can see them right there on the screen, Netherlands in white, Finland in yellow, Austria in blue and France in purple. We'll call it purple, even though it probably is supposed to be red. But look at that. I mean, that, is, that speaks for itself. So if you lose the benchmark, then what does that say to the others? Well, the others would all be in huge trouble. Basically, the uh, economics of the Eurozone, Germany represents 27 percent of the Eurozone. That's what they have to pay. So consequently, if uh, that becomes impacted, it's just a whole other ball game. Plus, as, we, as you pointed out, for instance, Italy, after all the EC buying, is now a 7% yield. What does that mean for all the other corporations in Italy that are trading at 200, 300 back of that? They're at 10% to fund, can't fund. Well, and, and that's a key point, actually, right? If, if the ECB hadn't been buying Italian debt, then where would it be? Because right now it's at 7% with the ECB buying. Probably 50 to 100 basis points back. Um, but I think what's really going to happen uh, here, this morning, as I indicated to you earlier, I was on with some very serious asset uh, management people, so one of the biggest uh, firms in the world this morning. We were talking about this subject, and the reality is that people, in my opinion, and the, what I'm hearing from big institutions, is they just don't want any more uh, part of Europe. They don't want to fund. They have to fund almost $800 billion in the next 12 months in sovereign debt in Europe. And what happens if nobody shows up? Hey, you know, I keep getting messages from people, email me, when guys like you come on, they say, ask him, where's the money coming from? Who's going to fund it? I mean, where is the money coming from? It gets down to, in the whole world, it's probably four or 5,000 institutions, which means four or 5,000 guys that'll put up the money for these uh, funding operations. But, but from where? China, the U.S., the rest of Europe? Where, where's it's the money coming from? It's mostly coming from Europe, from the United States, some from Asia. But there are a lot of people that are saying it's too risky. We don't know what Europe is doing. They're playing funny money with their finances. They're playing funny money with sovereign debt. We're not going to fund. A lot of people have come on air recently, and I know you've been, been talking to a bunch of guys this week, who've said, the problem with, with an Italy going to 7%, it's not a value because it makes their costs higher, which means it's going to 8, which means that's not a value, which means it's going to 9, which it's like a negative feedback loop. Yeah, I mean, what's happening right now is one thing feeds into another, and you're getting kind of this downward spiral, both in terms of costs. As yields go higher, people say that's too risky. And the other thing we've learned during the sovereign debt crisis is very interesting. We used to think of sovereign debt as zero risk. But now we've discovered that if you're a corporation living under the sovereign, you have rules, regulations, and laws to follow. But the sovereign can change the rules as they want, when they want. So the proposition is inherently riskier than the bond market investors have thought for the last hundred years. All right, they call you the wizards, so put on your wizards cap. What's the end game here? The end game is one of four possibilities. The end game is that the Eurozone divides up into the stronger and weaker uh, nations. One of the funding countries, uh, Germany, Finland, perhaps the Netherlands, Austria says, we've had it, we're not going to do this anymore. And Finland for the Finlands and Germany for the Germans. The other end game is the investors stop funding and there's no more money that's forthcoming. And finally, democracy and the citizens say enough. We continue now <laughs> with Mark Grant of Southwest Securities. The out of the box newsletter that he writes is read in about, what, 50 countries? 50 countries point? that are in somewhere around 5,000 institutions. And you've been banging the drum for a long time on get out of Europe yeah. now. What indicators are you looking at? I mean, a lot of times we're talking about stocks reacting to what's happening in Europe, but often there's a lot of different credit markets that are better indicators and are often uh, first 
to indicate that there's something wrong? Well, there are a number of uh, exchange-traded funds you can look at, but really more than, than that, it's not a matter of the technicals. You're looking at the fundamentals. I look at the credit of a country. I started on Greece uh, in January uh, 2010 when the Greek 10-year yield was a 438. I think it's somewhere around 25 and a half percent now. Staggering. So you have to really be out in front of this uh, and and analyze what's going on. Italy, for instance, which uh, we were just talking about, Adam and I were just talking about, is a real indicator of future trouble. Bond, ten-year bonds of a sovereign like Italy don't hit seven percent without telling you we've got trouble coming up. What about some of the short-term stuff? I mean, often these notions of, and we're getting in the weeds a little bit, but reverse repo deaths. When we look at these short-term overnight trading spreads, often they're a little bit of a snoozer, right, from day to day in terms of where they go. But when they move dramatically, that often tells you a little bit, or perhaps suggests that there's going to be a liquidity crisis for some of these, for some of the sovereigns, some of the banks. That's correct. What you're ha seeing right now is a huge spread between dollar-denominated short-term funding. I don't want to make it overly complicated and European euro denominated short term funding. So the dollar denominated funding is much more valuable now, costs a lot more than the euro funding. So you're getting a real signal from the markets that the dollar's not only strengthening to the point that it has recently, but it's going to strengthen a lot more as the banks need funding in dollars. Well, how stretched is the rubber band right now? It's stretched. It's not as stretched as bad as Lehman Bear Stearns fiasco, but it's moving in that direction and fairly quickly. And what does it mean for U.S. markets? Well, the U.S. markets, I mean, the, the bond market in the United States is, is beginning to get the joke about how serious this is. Even though you have the Prime Minister of Germany saying it's the biggest crisis since World War II, which is what she said yesterday. So, but the stock market in the United States is kind of focused on the American technicals, fundamentals. And this is exactly the same thing, by the way, that we saw going into the Lehman fiasco. The American market didn't get it till all of a sudden they said, oh, my God, and they did. All right, that's a perfect place to end this. we got to go into a break. Thanks so much, Mark Rand of Southwest Securities. We'll be right back.